So, Paul, an interesting happened on... So, on uh, God! So, Start an episode with so. I said so. I said so. And I, so, Paul. And so, I, Paul. And I so don't care anymore. <laughs> All right, get get you know, snap back to reality, B Rabbit. Um, here's what we're going to talk about because it was brought up by Truth to Hearts uh, in the live stream that we did on on Friday, mm -hmm. and it was a lot of fun live stream. By the way, uh, thank you for all of our new channel members that were joining to the 55 man roster, the Pro Bowl, the All Pro Team Hall of Fame. If you guys want a detailed breakdown, it's right below this video. You want to go click on the link if you want to become a premium member. Uh, you get all these episodes right when I create them. So. The Saturday or that Sunday or whatever, when I end up uh, editing them and finishing them up, you'll get them before everyone else does for the rest of the week. The uh, the, the Sunday drive, the cruise control, and the uh, drive through, you get all that stuff. Plus, fifty percent of the proceeds will be going to the Punt Foundation uh, from your membership. So we can't thank you enough for doing that. All the new members and all the future members that will be joining, thank you so much. And another thing too, if this is your first time here, that little red button that's down below there that says subscribe, make sure you turn that gray before you leave. The other thing is this. Truth to Hearts had a great point. He had an excellent point. He said, listen, do you think that what happened to Frank Gore in 2019 with, with Devin Singletary usurping him, do you think that that could be a possibility of Moss doing that to Singletary in 2020? I thought it was an, a, such an intriguing question. And, you know, here at Hashtag Sports, we, we like to talk about things like this. I mean, if, if you're one of those individuals that's like, these guys are insane, we're not even going to discuss this, Singletary's the running back, blah, blah, blah. We understand that. That's fine. But that's we're here to talk about it. I mean, I think it's an interesting topic. It's something that has happened for the Buffalo Bills before. So, I mean, I'm, I'm interested to get your take initially, Paul, and then uh, I'll see where uh, where I stand after you start talking. All right. So, I, I think it's really interesting because when Devin Singletary got drafted, right, what was the one thing that we were concerned about, right? Do you remember? We talked about this at the draft. His um, – um, his, 2,755 touches in college. Yeah, right. Exactly. That was, no, right. <laughs> well, I mean, ultimately, it was uh, 765 touches oh. in college in three seasons. Three, right? Do you remember That's the argument that Bean made? Never. I'm sorry. You remember the argument Bean made when they said no. that? They said, well, don't you worry about his usage as touches? And he goes, well, 67 of the, I can't remember how many touches like he had. He goes, 67 of those, he wasn't touched. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, I was like, nice spin, Brandon. You, you yeah, are the good man. job, buddy. You are the man. Good job. Uh, uh, yeah, the usage bothers me. Yes, absolutely. Right, yeah. But if we, if we look at Zach Moss, literally the exact, almost the exact same usage numbers, mm -hmm. right? He had 778 uh, plays from scrimmage in his college career, but a little bit different. So Zach Moss kind of, Zach Moss, I think, comes in with a little bit more kid gloves than Singletary did, right? Singletary came in, very durable player played a bunch, played a lot, was a major part of that offense. Yes. But Zach Moss, on the other hand, uh, you know, thought his career was over at one point because he, he had a meniscus injury. Yes. Then he then he has a shoulder injury, right? So he's had he's had multiple lost games. And that's a normally like a no fly zone for Buffalo. Like if yes. you're a player who's got injury history, normally they like you to be a couple of years removed from that. Um but that they were trying to trade up for Zach Moss. So do I think Zach Moss could take over for Devin Singletary? The, the answer here is no right now. Do I think that come week nine, this could really be a conversation? Yeah, I do. Um, I think that this absolutely could be a conversation. Uh, don't get me wrong. I like Devin Singletary an awful lot. I think uh, the things that he does uh, on a football field for, um, like, yeah, I think he's awesome in picking up a blitz. You know, for a rookie player last season, I thought he did a great job with that. I would have liked him to have been a little bit of a better receiver, right? Yeah. I, he had some drops. He had some drops. But you put the football in his hands, and he has a tendency to be able to make something happen. And he's really an exciting player. But Zach Moss, when I watch him, he's just so unworldly patient. And when he decides to go, he's gone and I, he doesn't have that pull away speed no, right no. so he doesn't have that he doesn't have that next level gear but i don't need that for me at the running back position i don't no. need that no you don't no, need any i don't i don't need that no i don't need that 
right? So do I think that Zach Moss is going to replace Devin Singletary week one? Absolutely not. No way. No rookie running back is going to take over Devin Singletary's job. I don't care who he is. Um, By week nine, though, you're going to start seeing Zach Moss actually integrated into the plan. And then we're going to get to see what the Bills really saw in him Mm. by how how they put him out there and what packages. And I think by week 12, you're going to know whether Zach Moss is uh, is a whole round better a player than Devin Singletary. Because to me, Zach Moss was second round player, right? Oh my he was goodness. Second round player. I can't so believe I really like I really like Zach Moss. That I is, really like him. That is that is incredibly intriguing. I uh, it, it's funny too because we had we had a similar discussion. Now this is how long ago this was. We had a similar discussion about this about Devin Singletary when Shady was still on the roster, I believe. Right. Yeah. Because he was still yeah. on the roster after the draft, right? Yep. Okay. All right. Yep. All right. By the way, just to give you everyone a disclaimer, it's not going to be scrolling beneath the the, 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 the video. I'm just going to let you know. There's going to be no mention of TJ Alden in this episode. I just want to let everyone know. <laughs> just so they're okay. This is purely a Singletary and Moss discussion. Um, I think that is incredibly interesting because if, if the Buffalo Bills brass um, – you know how they are, their propensity not to not to start rookies. They want them to right. earn their spot. That's the way that the McDermott rolls. That's the way he's done it. That's the way it's worked. Um, right. So if you have something where they feel that Moss has more potential than Singletary, and mm. they're always trying to upgrade positions no matter where they are, and it doesn't matter what you did, it matters what you're going to do. So mm-hmm. in, in that respect, if Moss ends up usurping uh, Singletary in that respect, um, maybe that's why you say, listen, let's take Singletary this year. I'm just putting this out there. I mean, you guys can agree or disagree with this. Maybe we'll take Singletary this year. We'll have him be mentored by Frank Gore because there's, there's, that's, a, that's an excellent mentor to have about longevity in the league and everything mm-hmm. you want to do as far as he, he already came into the league with a bunch of touches. Okay, we're going to mentor him so that then when next year when possibly a better running back that we can get, even yourself saying he's a second-round talent, comes into the league – Let's do that. And then, you know what? He'll be conditioned to playing about 12 games. Moss will progress to a certain point. The only curveball that I have for you is that I don't think Moss, right this second, or after nine games, I'm going to go out on a limb here, depending on who works with him, I don't think even after nine games he's going to have the pass pro ability as Devin Singletary. And to yeah. be a thir- three down back in the NFL – Technically, a three-down back. You don't just have to be able to catch the ball. You got to be able to pick up the blitz. Um, I think yeah. the the push of this is. I don't think he's going to take over Singletary's job. I think he'll be an excellent complement to him because, like you said, he doesn't. You don't need to change the offensive philosophy of this team when Moss is in versus Singletary. I don't think you have to. I don't think you have to do right. any of that. I agree with that. Yeah. But yeah. I think that this. The, the push here is this, because you're saying that he could usurp him. I'm saying that he won't. The push is if Dable decides to open up the offense and start putting two back sets in, that is something that confounded the Buffalo Bills all last year. We saw it in the Philly sure game. We saw it yep. in the Cleveland game. That was something that a new wrinkle that you can add to your offense because you got to think about it. 70% of the time last year, they, they were 11 personnel. There were three wide receivers, one mm-hmm. tight end, one running back. You put right. Moss and Singletary on the field at the same time when Moss is ready. Mm-hmm. For you people in the back, that's when Moss is ready. Um, when he's ready. That offers a dynamic to your offense that teams are not prepared for, have mm-hmm. to adjust quickly, so you're gonna you're telling me that they're gonna have to cover Moss and or Singletary out of the backfield, as they're all already trying to deal with Diggs, Beasley, and Brown. Mm-hmm. Come on now. Come well, on. Well, and I, I think that's I think that's kind of the interesting part there, right? So we're talking about we say as Bills fans we want to see you know two back sets. Let's do the math here, right? Yes. yes. You got five offensive linemen. You got one quarterback and two running backs, carry, right? Carry the one. Yes, you're at surprise. Okay. All right. So we're at eight. Right? Five, six, seven, eight. Okay, we're at eight. Now, you also typically are going to put out at least two wide receivers, right? So that takes us to 10. Typically. Right? Okay. So 
then are you going to deploy? So that that basically means you're removing John Brown, Cole Beasley, or Stephon Diggs to run a two back set because you're not running a two back set out of three wide. Why not? I mean, you could in a hur- in a in a more hurry up offense look, right? Who? No, no, sure. Not, not even in a hurry up. But I mean, I, I like the propensity of doing that in a, in a two back in, in a two minute drill because mm-hmm. then you can yeah. at least guarantee you have seven in to protect whenever. Right. And then exactly. when you have Brown yeah. Beasley, when you have Brown Beasley and Diggs going out in routes. Those are three formidable wideouts that can get open by themselves with seven protecting. That's mm-hmm. about the two minute. I understand. However, more likely the, the likelihood of Dawson Knox coming off the field for some reason versus Brown Beasley or Diggs is, is bigger. I think. Okay, because, so you so you, so you think? But I see. I look at Dable. I don't give Dable that credit. He's I never don't, used to that though. That, I, that doesn't mean on. they're not on the field. <laughs> Hashtag Lee Smith. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I just don't I, see that though. Like I I would love to I would love to say that we're gonna see two back sets. I would because the dynamic between Moss and Singletary, it is a pick your poison sort of scenario, right? It really is. It's a pick your poison sort of scenario. I love that you call seven protect, right? Because I, I just want to make sure that you call out exactly what that means for those people that heard it but didn't pick up what exactly you're referring to. So when you call seven protect. What, what do you actually mean when you say that? So we're talking about two back set, three wide receivers, which means no tight end, right? So when you say seven and protect, what do you what are you actually talking about? Basically, basically what I'm saying is that if you're going to, on a two-minute drill, which the Buffalo Bills happened to struggle a little bit in 2019 with because they were going 31 personnel, you were sending Dawson Knox out on a route. So you had – Singletary had to learn very, very quick about what was going on and who he had to pick up in the protection. So basically if you're doing a man protection – and you're going front side is on your right side. So Allen's going to be looking right. Um, he would be in shotgun, and sometimes you would see Singletary walk behind him and go on his left side because he was doing the backside because the line's shifting to the right. If you put Josh Allen in a shotgun set with split backs on e- either side of him, the, the, the running backs are going to have a read. Obviously, you already have the, art, the five linemen that are going to be protecting in front of him. Then you have the two running backs. They're going to have choice routes. Well, now, choice routes means this. If nobody comes, you go in the flat. If nobody comes, you run a flare. If nobody comes, you're going to go up the middle and kind of be a safety valve for Josh Allen, which we've seen Tom Brady do 7,000 times. Right. You know, he'd be, he'd be running a fake to the running back and say, go in the flat as he's running the fake. Like, come on now. Mm-hmm. But the point is this. If 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 a, if a situation present, presented itself like it did in 2019, where teams were starting to load the box and bring a bunch of people at him, we understand that happened. You have the five linemen and now both running backs in to protect your franchise, which is Josh Allen, and the three wide receivers that you have in the routes are all guys that are shifty that can get open. So mm-hmm. that's what I mean by the seven protection. You got the two running backs and the five linemen all surrounding Allen and, and taking on whatever type of blitz. And here's the thing too. If a team decides to blitz and both running backs have to stay in, now you have guys one on one. You you mm-hmm. want a one on one Beasley? You want a one on one Diggs? You want a one on one John Brown? Good luck. That's what I'll say to that one. That's what I'll, I'll say. Good luck. So that's what I mean by seven protection. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm glad you I'm glad you labeled that out right because yeah. I have something that you don't know that we're about to talk about regarding the the two running backs here, right? So. This doesn't relate to Singletary or Moss or Moss directly, but I think it kind of talks about what kind of expectation they have of them as players, right? Okay. right. So, are you ready for this? I don't think I am. I never am. Okay. You always hit okay. me with a hammer over the face, so I don't understand. <laughs> All right. So the Bills running back coach is a guy by the name of Kelly Skipper. Okay. So he's been he's been I mean he's been a, a position coach for like 14 years in the NFL. So he's been around, right? Okay. He's been around. Um, when he was in college, right? Here are the running backs that he worked with when he was a co- when he was in college. He was Fresno State from '89 to '97. Lorenzo Neal, Michael Pittman, Reggie Brown. In okay, you with me so far? I don't okay. know where this is going at all. Okay, uh, '98 to 2002. Deshaun Foster. Do you remember Deshaun Foster? I'd like to forget. Thank you for reminding okay. me. Okay. Okay. Next up. He was in. He went to Washington State from 2003 to 2006. Jerome Harrison, Chris Ivory. Do you see a type yet? Are you seeing a type? Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. We're not done. He was in Oakland from 2007 to 2014. Was McFadden there? McFadden was there. <laughs> 
Uh, Marcel Reese, the fullback, also made his first Pro Bowl with him as running backs coach. 2015 to 2016, he was in Jacksonville, which is where Chris Ivory. Chris Ivory was, and so was TJ Yeldon. TJ Yeldon became the first Jaguar rookie to surpass 1,000 yard scrimmage since MJD did it in 2006 under Kelly Skipper. Now, Yeldon is the different is the different type of back here right Mm -hmm. what do i see when i look at kelly skipper's resume interior runner interior runner interior runner interior runner what do i see on the bills devin singletary who because of his size people think that devin singletary is not an interior runner he is he absolutely is a hundred percent is and so zach moss right they're both interior runners so what you're telling me now by giving me those stats the one thing that you mentioned besides interior runners was you mentioned a lot of fullbacks Mm mm-hmm so are we to see Pat DeMarco make the Pro Bowl this year? <laughs> no, but what the reason I bring it up is because these, um, you know, it, it, I think the possibility of two back sets kind of falls a little bit by the wayside because if you're looking at the skill set that the Bills clearly value, it's on interior runners, not receivers. Okay, all right. right? So what, what you're saying is that unless it's a special case or a special package, we're not going to see a two back split set of right. Moss and Singletary. They'll go one right. at a time. They're mm-hmm. going to run inside the tackles. They're going to find their lanes. They're going to give you three mm-hmm. yards in a cloud of dust. Right. And then we're going to keep moving the ball that way. We keep our defense off the field. Okay. Right. I think I think it's important to remember that Devin Singletary had more receptions in his rookie year with the Buffalo Bills than he had his two college, his last two college seasons. Right. I, th- I think that's important to call out because he had 26 receptions his uh, freshman year in, at uh, Florida Atlantic. Then he went 19 and six, right? Mm. Zach Moss, on the other hand, had almost 30 receptions for three consecutive seasons, right? He, he went 29. Yeah, he went 29. His junior year, he lost, he lost four games to injury. So he only had eight receptions then. And he had 28 receptions as a senior. So again a little bit more of an accomplished receiver than Singletary I think that was clearly a hole once you got deep into the season you saw that Singletary wasn't the wasn't the best receiver yeah but you still left yelled it on the bench you sure did yeah, or inactive so basically yeah. what you have told me now by by laying out the groundwork of Moss and Singletary is the fact that what they did at the quarterback position by drafting Jake Fromm mm-hmm. You're paying him on a rookie deal. You don't have to pay Matt Barkley next year. Mm -hmm. Or you don't have to look for another quarterback next year. What they essentially did was cover themselves at the running back position as well with Zach Moss and not having to sign T.J. Alden or any other running back next year. Right. So they can use all of those funds toward their defense, which they're going to need. Basically. Well, the defense got to get younger, right? Yeah. But, yeah, they got to get younger. That's fascinating. That's a fascinating point to think about. It is right. So I, I, that's some of the things that I, I don't think we always get to when we're like, when we're fans of the team, we don't yes. get to that granular stuff. Like the TJ Yeldon signing, like I'm, I'm mad at myself that I didn't think Kelly Skipper's the running back coach. TJ Yeldon should be here. Chris Ivory was already here, right? Yes. Like yes. that, that signing, the Chris Ivory signing happened. Kelly Skipper was our running backs coach at the time. Yeah. And you just know, like Yeldon usurped Ivory in Jacksonville. <laughs> He did it again in Buffalo. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. So it's, uh, you know, it's it's fascinating how all this stuff plays out. Yeah. But it's just the quarterbacks coach, the the offensive coordinator, the head coach. You, you're not going to see a heavy dose of Zach Moss early, and I just don't see him taking over for Singletary, um, right away because the things yeah. that Zach Moss is really good at, he's going to need a lot of reps to to be able to to show what he can do on an NFL level before before he loses his step to Singletary. Singletary is just so good in pass pro. Well, I, I may, he's amazing in pass pro. And the one thing that I, I'm going to take away from this episode, and hopefully uh, Hashtag Nation takes it away as well, we see the influence of a running backs coach on personnel moves. Mm-hmm. Does, it, does it give you some more comfort to know that they're trusting the staff themselves? to make these types of moves and bring guys in in that respect. I mean, I think it's, I think it's good that it's just not a dictatorship by the head coach telling everyone who they want. I, right. I, I think it's great. He's like, he probably went up to him and said, listen, we did this in Jacksonville. I like Yeldon better. Could you get him down a two year deal? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. And that was probably the negotiation process last year before the draft. Like, okay, let's get him on a mm-hmm. two year deal. We'll get rid of ivory. We'll do this. You know, we're not going to resign ivory, blah, blah, blah. 
So uh, that part of it, uh, aside from all this discussion, we took a while to get there. I understand that, but that's part of the discussion that I, I really enjoy is the fact that mm-hmm. look what happened. You know what I mean? So. Yep. It's all there, man. It's all there. <laughs> Did you know the Bills have a nickel coach? That's a discussion for another day. <laughs> I guess so. They got a big nickel coach. They do. They got a coach just for the big nickel. He weighs about 350 pounds. Just letting you know. Just putting it out there. Just so everybody knows. It's pretty heavy. 